This is Tuesday, November 10th, 2015. We are in Natick, Massachusetts, and this tape is part of the Morse Institute Library's continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan. Our cameraman is Dan McDermott of Natick Pegasus. And we are privileged to have with us today Andrew John Leshensky. Welcome, Andrew. Thank you. Glad to be here. Well, thanks. Thank you for coming. May I ask when you were born? March 30th, 1941. And where were you born? Gardner, Massachusetts. I understand you actually grew up in Athol. Yes, I did. Okay. First 18 years of my life. And what community do you currently live in? Natick, Massachusetts, home of champions. <laughs> Your marital status? I'm married. And do you have children? I have three children. Tell us what Athol was like growing up. It was a small town. I think it has 12,000 uh, 500 people, and I think it's that 12,500 people, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, back then, uh, we had two movie theaters and two bowling alleys, which uh, neither, none of them exist today. So I'm glad I grew up when I grew up there. What did your parents do for a living? Uh, my mother died when I was six and a half, mm -hmm. and uh, my father was a tool maker for the LS Thera Tool Company. Mm -hmm. Did you have any brothers or sisters? I had one sister who raised me from the age of, it was acted as my mother from the age of uh, seven to when I was 14. And my father remarried uh, when I was 14 because he needed someone to take care of me. Mm -hmm. And I had two half sisters from that marriage. Mm -hmm. Now, Andrew, I, I know you were kind of, your first couple of years, it was World War II. Do you rem have any memories of that? <clears throat> well, I remember we were saving tin foil, uh, aluminum tin foil and scrap metal. And uh, we, we lived across from a park and they had a nice fountain. And I think they had copper faucets and stuff, which they took for the war effort. They, took, they cleaned everything out so I couldn't get any drink at that fountain anymore. Uh, and I think I joined Air Patrol or something like that. We used to report <laughs> airplanes we saw flying over. Uh, I used to call somebody way back then. I forget what they called it. But yeah, we we're concerned about airplanes in the sky. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's what I remember. That was a long time ago. <laughs> OK, Andrew, uh, let's get you into school. What uh, school did you uh, go to? Well, I went to Athol High. Uh, great experience. Uh, I, Played on the football team four years, and uh, my fond fondest memories were the football team in the psych class, psychology. Uh, from there, I went to Boston College, 59 and 63, and that's where I joined the Air Force uh, when, I get, when I graduated from uh, BC. And uh, after four and a quarter years in the Air Force, I went to Suffolk University Law School. Mm -hmm. Let's get you back to Athol High School. Um, do you remember <coughs> what was being taught as far as we're now, you're now deep in the middle of the Cold War, Vietnam was just beginning to uh, bubble up? I, I, as far as... Um, what was going on in the political and in, in, in the military scene. I don't remember them mm -hmm. doing any talking about that. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, the, the fondest memory I had was one of the, the math teachers who used to blow whistles and try to keep us awake. Uh, but the psychology uh, class I had, um, I really enjoyed that. And I, I think I'm still using some of this stuff in my mm -hmm. practice, uh, in a former practice or whatever today, and I think I could have been a good shrink if I had gone a different route. How about at Boston College? Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, I, I, I love Boston College. I love the professors. I almost became a priest. Uh, uh, Boston College is run by Jesuits, and at the time I was uh, pretty religious, and I liked to learn. I, I was. Um, I really wanted to learn knowledge and, uh, as much as I could. And I thought the Jesu Jesuits, or Jebbies as they were called, uh, they spent a, a lifetime studying and learning. Mm -hmm. uh, but I had an experience with Father Cadigan, and I think they might have named the building after him now. I've got to check this out. 
But I had him freshman year for what's called English. And I worked, he was a real hard professor, and I worked extremely hard in his class. And the highest I ever got, I think, was a C plus. And I found out the reason he doesn't give a high mark is because if you were not in the honors program, he didn't think you deserved a mark higher than a C plus. So I got his highest mark for someone not in, on the honors program. So the second year, uh, I forget what, how, what it is, the, the English program. They have different terms for, for it. Second year, I'm waiting for the English professor to come in. And who walks through the door? Father Cadigan. Mm. Three people smarter than me got up and walked out of the class <laughs> because they didn't want to go through that with him again. So I stayed there again. I, I think I got my C plus or maybe a C. I'm not sure. I, I stuck with him. He was hard. He was hard. But I, it, it took away from other courses because I spent more time trying to please him. But when I was in the Air Force and I was thinking of going to Boston College Law School, uh, who did I go to see when I was there? I went to the BC campus and I looked up Father Cadigan. And he remembered me well. And he said, Ms. Lyshensky, when you get done here, go down and see Father Drynan, who was the head of the Boston College Law School, and tell him I, I recommend you. And if he needs something, then have him give me a call. But I still had two more years to go in the service, mm -hmm. so I didn't do that. But And Father Drynan was Father Robert Drynan, right. who later became a member of Congress. Right, exactly. Um, but then when it finally, uh, two years later, I, um, I figured uh, financially and so on and so forth, and um, I'd, go, I'd go to Suffolk. I didn't think I'd, I'd qualify Mark-wise to get into BC. Um, and in the meantime, I, I did get married in the service. I married an Air Force uh, nurse, and uh, we had one baby there and one baby when I was going to law school. And then we had one down the road a ways. Mm -hmm. Let's get you back. You have a degree bought from Boston College in your back pocket. You decided to enter the military, and why was that? I figured I needed to mature myself, number one. And number two was money, 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 money. Um, I'm trying to think back now who, who paid for me when I was going to BC. I know I worked in the summers, and um, um, I think my sister helped me and my father helped me financially. But I, back then it was cheap, too. I think it was mm -hmm. like 350 room board or something, both each semester, something like that. Uh, but <clears throat> to answer, get back real quick, I, I needed some maturity, and I also needed some money to pay for mm -hmm. law school. And so I decided I, the way to do that is to go into the service. Now, why the Air Force? Well, this could be a long story. Uh, my, my, my first choice, I want to be a pilot. I, I, as a kid, I always took a, got on my bike and I went to Orange Mass and I used to photograph the planes and watch the planes take off. And I learned a little bit uh, through books on how to fly and so on and so forth. Uh, but then I found out. Uh, when I went to the optometrist one time, I have what's called color confusion. I can see red and green, but I might not see a red roof over a green forest or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that would knock me out of uh, being a pilot, I thought, in the Air Force. <clears throat> so uh, my, uh, my, red, my, my full sister married a, a person who was a Navy ensign. And so I said, let me go in the Navy. And they said the same thing. I, I could only be a supply officer if I went in the Navy. So, uh, and um, he said, don't be a supply officer in the Navy. He says, no way. So I went back to the Air Force. And it was a fight to get in the Air Force in the program I wanted. Because uh, I wanted something that would help me if I went to law school. So the Air Force says, hey, we'll take you in as an aircraft maintenance officer. And I says, I'm somewhat handy with cars and this and that, but I, I don't really want to mess around with airplane engines and so on and so forth. So I said, I want to be an air police officer. And they said, no way. It was letters that went back and forth between me and the Air Force. 
And I said, okay, I forget it. I'm going to join the Marines. So I got a letter back. <laughs> Eventually said, uh, yeah, you've been, uh, you've been accepted as a, to be an air police officer in the United States Air Force. So I said, okay, where do I sign? And that's how I got in the, the Air Force and as an Air Police Officer. Okay, and where were you sent for basic training? Uh, Lackland Air Force Base, September 67. It was um, become a, what they call a 90 day wonder, become mm -hmm. a second lieutenant. And was this the first time you were away from Massachusetts? Yes. And you just mentioned 1967. Did you mean 1963? I meant 1963. Thank you. <laughs> You're saying, boy, that was a jump. <laughs> that, was, that must have been a lot of letters going in between. <laughs> so, okay, you're now in Lackland. And tell us what that was like. It was very interesting. Uh, you know, I met a lot of men that were my age and uh, from all over the country. And... Uh, uh, the, the training was going under the barbed wire with the bullets, fake bullets going across and this and that and marching and learning how to uh, drill people, uh, take over that, which I used in later life at, at Maxwell. Uh, but while there, uh, there was an explosion. We were, we were marching someplace uh, early in the morning. There was an explosion and there was a mushroom cloud and it scared the living daylights out of us. And uh, we, they never told us what it was. And I'm not sure when that was, because later on, while I was there, President Kennedy got shot. And we were really scared. Uh, people that were married, that, uh, they called their, their wives and, and talked about it. And uh, we thought we were going to war with Russia. And I can't remember if the, if the explosion was before or after that uh, Kennedy. I think it was before, though, before Kennedy got shot. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was real, uh, it was good, make a bed so they put a quarter on it would <laughs> bounce up and, and stuff like that and I learned how to spit polish the, the shoes and, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Tell us about a little more <clears throat> about the day Kennedy was shot. You were down in Texas, you're not that far from Dallas. Was the base put on alert? They didn't tell, the position we were in, they, they didn't tell us anything. They, they really didn't. They, they didn't say, you know, we're on, I, I assume it was, but they sure didn't. Um, it, even the next day, no one said anything to us. We just had a, luckily we had a TV, we could watch a little, you know, a few minutes a day. And that's, uh, we saw all, Oswald get shot on TV. We had no newspapers. Or, we, we couldn't go out to a, a restaurant or any place or the B, BOQ, I can't remember, I mean, uh, not the BX, I meant. Mm -hmm. I couldn't remember them doing anything. They kept uh, tight control on us for the, those uh, three months. Okay. So when did BASIC end? Sometime in December of 63. Uh, You get out of BASIC, and you're a second lieutenant now? Yes. Tell us what happened next. Uh, I'm trying to think. If I remember right, I think I went home. Uh, I had a Volkswagen, and I, uh, I drove home to Massachusetts, did some trout fishing <laughs> up in Athol. Uh, but then I went to Maxwell Air Force Base and uh, met, met the major. Uh, Major Rogers, and uh, uh, and where is? Oh, pardon me, but where is Mac Maxwell? Okay, Maxwell is at uh, Mac uh, Montgomery, Alabama. Okay. And it's at A, A University Command, and it consists of two bases: uh, Maxwell Air Force Base and Gunner Air Force Base across across town, across the city. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you met the major. <laughs> And he was a tough, gruff old man, but uh, we, got, we got along pretty good. Okay, Andrew, you're now at Maxwell Air Force Base in Montgomery, Alabama. What were your duties? <clears throat> uh, 
Well, I was looking at my DD-214 in preparation for this, and it said uh, civilian equipment is, is a police captain, uh, which is a pretty good analogy. Uh, uh, we had uh, four flights uh, uh, that worked eight-hour shifts, and with one flight being off, and my job was to prepare them uh, before they went on duty each day, and. Uh, uh, make sure they're sharp, give them any instructions uh, if, if the boss wanted them, if the major wanted anything done special, any, any special event going on in the base. Uh, one way I looked at this, and it puts me down somewhat, but I consider, it's all like being a campus cop, because it was, <laughs> it was a university, there were two schools there, a squadron officer school, and then another school, which the name is out of my mind right now for lieutenant colonels and, and maybe even late generals or whatever. Uh, so we, we gave uh, officers training for, for their future lives in the Air Force. Um, and we did have one, one mission, oh, and Gunner was the, the doctors and nurses. They were trained over there. And we did have one building which was special and needed extra security. So I made sure my men protected that. And to be honest with you, it's basically the first sergeants that do most of the work. <laughs> I just tell the sergeant what to do mm -hmm. and, and follow up on it. I, I love the, uh, the, the couple of sergeants I had. They were really, really good, really good men. Mm -hmm. Before the interview, you mentioned <clears throat> uh, the Civil Rights March in Montgomery. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, while I was at Montgomery, um, the, uh, the, the somewhat the Montgomery match uh, took place. And uh, was a, I, think I made some notes on it. I think it was a 53, 54 mile match. And uh, they expected a lot. Governor Wallace was governor of Alabama at the time. And, and, and um, a, a lot of incidents went down off base. but. Uh, when that was going on, 2,000 U.S. soldiers were uh, uh, nationalized and uh, 1,900 members of the Air National Guard were nationalized and some of them stayed on base. Uh, our base was integrated, so I, I kind of thought it might be some problem with, with, with fights and this and that at the mess hall. And, and, uh, but to my knowledge, nothing really happened. Uh, mm -hmm. Everyone took place or whatever. And, uh, uh, the, ma the march was successful. They finally um, marched to the State House. Uh, again, my men did the job. I, I, it was a big event outside the base, but the base was c quiet and secure. And, mm -hmm. and I guess we did our job, is when I was saying it. Um, There was one other thing of schooling. I'm not sure we mentioned that, but um, let me see if I can find the date here real quick. Mm -hmm. After I became, went to school for being a second lieutenant, shortly thereafter that, and I, the, the date ex escapes me right now, I was sent to air police school. And I think that was, uh, about six weeks, and that was back at San Antonio. And there we had a, uh, uh, a little bit more freedom on, on weekends. Uh, and one of the incidents that happened on the weekend, I mentioned that we were going down to uh, Mexico to see a bullfight. And one of, one of the uh, policemen with me, uh, police lieutenants, was a uh, big husky uh, black man. And just before we got to the Mexican border, we decided to have breakfast. And we went inside the restaurant, and everyone looked at us. And we weren't thinking. Uh, everyone got up and walked out of the restaurant because of the black man with us. And they fed us. but. Um, Reluctantly, because uh, I think they knew we were servicemen, but uh, the place emptied out. So that was a scary incident. Mm -hmm. uh, 
so then we get to the the bullfight, and uh, they thought that uh, I, I can't think of his name right now, but they thought the big black guy that was with us was Sonny Liston, played a, a one of the fighters. I think <laughs> I think they mentioned Sonny Liston, but anyways, that that was the one incident at the Air Police School, and uh, again, it was good training, good training, and, and again, good men. That's the main thing with being in the service is the fellowship. Mm -hmm. The fellowship, we're all dedicated to serve, and uh, uh, no matter where we came from, we still mm -hmm. did the same thing. Now, Andrew, you're also in that part of the country when things in Vietnam begin to heat up. Can you tell us a little more about what it was like? <clears throat> I feel a little bit guilty of this. I can't really think much about Vietnam. I mean, I was down in Alabama. Uh, my men, some of my men went over there. Uh, one of my bosses, a Captain, I won't mention his last name, I understand he had a nervous um, uh, incident over there and, and had to come back. Um, but other than that, I was, really wasn't thinking much about Vietnam. Mm -hmm. what was happening and this and that. I just did my thing on the base and, mm -hmm. and that was it. And I trained my men the best they could, but it was not, being a, being like a college campus, we didn't really have alerts, like SAC would have, or TAC would have, or, or this and that. So it was, it was pretty easy military security job that I had. Now you mentioned you met your wife while you were, um on duty in the Air Force. Can you tell me a little bit more about her? <laughs> I, I will, but I, whatever. Well, the men and the women lived at, in the same bachelor's office quarters or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we had a, 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 a cooking, a kitchen on the second floor. And one day I got off duty and I went and I saw that a pot roast had been cooked. And mm -hmm. I tasted it. And, 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 it didn't meet my uh, qualifications or whatever, so I mentioned it to someone, and and they mentioned it to the cook of the pot roast. And the next day, I got a knock on the door. I got a, a meal for you. Come on down. It was my wife. She had heard about her pot roast, and she cooked something else. I forget what it was, but then we've been together almost mm -hmm. ever ever since. Forty eight years. And she was a nurse in the Air Force. A nurse at, uh, mm -hmm. at that time in Maxwell Air Force, Bishop. Okay. A surgical nurse, OR nurse. And what's her name? Uh, Patricia. Patricia. How long were you stationed down in Maxwell? Practically, other than a temporary duty, uh, four and a quarter years. My whole service career was basically, other than uh, three months at Lackland, and then another six weeks, I think, for Air Police School, and then I was sent to Camp Perry, Ohio, for national rifle matches as a security officer, and uh, they sent me to Northwestern Traffic School for, I forget, four weeks, six weeks, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you left the military in? December 67. December 67. What was your rank at the time? I was a first lieutenant in the active service, but when when I was um, when I got out of the service, they made uh, became a captain in the reserves, but I mm -hmm. wasn't active in the reserves. Um, why did you decide to leave the service? Basically, it was an um, incident where the, the captain pulled rank on me. And because uh, I loved the service, my wife loved the service, and, and, and I would have stayed in, but I felt that somewhere down the line I might have run into a rotten apple mm -hmm. supervisor, and I didn't want to take the chance. Um, I saw what it did to my enlisted men that got riffed. Uh, uh, I don't know if you want names of it. Sergeant McElwain, mm -hmm. he was the master sergeant that took care of my men at Gunter, and he was a major, and the last three or four years of his career, he was knocked down to master, master sergeant as opposed to being paid as a major. 
and I didn't want to experience that somewhere mm -hmm. down the road. And so you left the service, yes. and you returned to Massachusetts? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. I went to Suffolk University Law School. So now you were an active duty officer, you're still a reserve officer, but now you're kind of like on the other side during law school, you're now a student. Uh, did you witness any, um, any war protests? I hope I'm lucky not, no. Really? Mm -hmm. I mean, I read stuff in the paper, but mm -hmm. I was mainly concerned about uh, getting through law school with, with mm -hmm. two babies and, mm -hmm. and figuring out how I'm going to do that. My wife was working hard. Uh, so I didn't have a whole lot of free time and, mm -hmm. and to um, uh, even read papers and watch TV and stuff like that. Right. And what was your main area of study at Suffolk Law? <clears throat> well, my favorite subject was contracts, mm -hmm. basically. And then uh, uh, torts, uh, personal injury and stuff like that, which I really didn't get into when I became a lawyer, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I love contracts. And when did you graduate from Suffolk? 1971. And Andrew, did you use the GI Bill to get through law school? I got some help, I think, from the state. I'm not okay. sure what it was. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the state uh, gave me some money. Uh, I'm not sure if the GI Bill was around. It mm -hmm. could have been, but I, don't, I didn't use it. At a, uh, mm -hmm. But the state gave me some money. Okay. What happens after you get out of law school? Well, I set up uh, private practice. Uh, I, I was in a law office with other people about, about my age, a little bit younger. <clears throat> and um, I don't want to get into my personal life, but mm -hmm. I, I did a lot of, uh, I was very successful in what I did, mm -hmm. but I was not very successful in, in charging people. I had trouble charging people. And mm -hmm. it's hard for people to understand. And, I've asked my psychologist at the VA what, what the problem was, and we still haven't figured out the problem. But I liked helping people. And I really, um, I had trouble asking people for money, they, even though uh, I was successful. And I can only think one or two cases that I thought I could have done better. And a lot of my clients gave me, when I did bill them, a lot of my clients gave me extra money because they figured it was worth more. And some worried why I was charging so little and whether I was really doing the service I, what they wanted or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. Andrew, you mentioned uh, the VA, the Veterans Administration. You have received help from them? Kudos. Uh, I, uh, about four years ago, I became very, very sick <coughs> uh, due to a, uh, a statin drug I was taking for uh, high cholesterol. And as a result, uh, I had to take a lot of uh, steroids, and it led to uh, my Achilles popping on my left foot. Mm -hmm. And when they were going to operate on that, um, I came down with an infection on my right foot, and I lost the right toe, and they never got around to operating on my Achilles tendon. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, in trying to get strong, I, I crushed my second vertebra in my back. And um, now I've got a torn rotator cuff. And, and the VA is dealing with all of this, and they're really, 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 really good. But mm -hmm. uh, I've got to know most of the doctors there and the nurses, and um, I've gotten really, really great care. And I think the thing I mentioned beforehand, too, is uh, sometimes I have like three appointments a day, about three days a week. Uh, is meeting other veterans there and uh, talking to the World War II veterans. I, I really love hearing their stories. And, uh, uh, and then the, uh, the Iraq veterans that, that I come across now. And uh, um, again, the whole thing is a, <clears throat> when I look back on my military service because of this, it's, it, it's, it's like one big family of different types of uh, people, the Army, Navy, all the Marines. I love the Marines. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, 
that really love the Marines. And again, I mentioned the Natick service officer here, Paul Crew. It's uh, good people. Andrew, looking back on your military <coughs> service, you never went to Vietnam, but you did serve your country during the 60s. And you've mentioned you've met other veterans from that era. Yeah, this is one of the thoughts I had. I, I, I kind of feel guilty serving and not going overseas. Um, and I've mentioned that thought to, because uh, I talked with everyone mm -hmm. about everything, and I've talked to other veterans at the VA, and people that have been in the same position have had the same thoughts. Mm -hmm. That, you know, we wish we had gone, or, and we admire the people that went and came back, you know, because they really had experiences to go through, and uh, which we didn't have to endure. Do you think that Vietnam veterans are being treated more fairly now? Thank God. Yes. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, back, again, you mentioned the history back mm -hmm. when the war was going on, and there were protests, I know. And, and uh, one of my favorite things is Joan Baez and some of the people that were against it. A little bit of that's coming back. I think I was starting to remember some of it. But now, uh, no, it's changed. It's changed like night and day. Mm -hmm. Today and, and I guess tomorrow is Veterans Day. Uh, back Veterans Day, back in the '80s, was not the same. I don't think. Mm -hmm. the it same. wasn't. Right. Mm -hmm. So thank God for the change. With mm -hmm. the, it's the guys over in Iraq and Iran and, and um, um, Afghanistan that, that changed it. What they went through. Mm -hmm. Andrew, um, is there anything else you'd like to mention? Are there any, any other stories that come to mind? Uh, actually, there is. But let me, can I check my notes one Go second? Go right I, ahead. I try to be real quick. Mm -hmm. I think we covered everything except one, one story. Uh, and I wish I remember his name. Back mm -hmm. at Maxwell Air Force Base, uh, I used to go out and spend a lot of time with the men because being at the post and being basically just letting people on and off the base can get pretty tiring. Uh, so there's one black airman and he was my quarterback. I also, uh, again, I also played on the football team in the, in the, in the squadron softball team. Uh, again, that's to, to be close to the men, and I, I enjoyed that. But my quarterback was a black kid from South Carolina, and I used to spend some extra time with him out at the uh, at the post. And I tried to get him to do some educational courses that they had for airmen and also mm -hmm. officers. I had I had a couple of them uh, educational courses that were free. And I talked to him one day, and I I said, "Why don't you, why don't, why don't you come up north when you're done?" Whatever, and he looked me right in the eye, and he said, Lieutenant, no, I'm going back to South Carolina. And I says, why, why? He says, here, if I went up north, they would say one thing to my face, but when I walk away, I'm pretty sure they're gonna say something else. Down here, they call it as it is. I'm a black man, and they call me a black man, and all that entails, and he says, that's the truth. And he said, I'm for the truth. And that has stuck with me mm -hmm. from 19, probably 65 to now. What he said and what he felt. Pretty smart kid. Yeah. A pretty smart kid, because I know what he was saying. Did you ever find out what happened to him? No, unfortunately, mm -hmm. I, uh, I don't. Did you ever attend uh, any reunions? <laughs> I don't think uh, the 38. Mm -hmm. Hundredth wing is <laughs> reunions, <laughs> but they, they might. But oh. I don't know of any. No, I haven't. Uh -huh. Quick and, answer, no. And after the after you left active service, did you join any organizations such as the Legion? No, but I, I, I've been meaning to look into those things, mm -hmm. but I, I really haven't. And mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I won't say the organization, but I've been asked to look at something for them now as the a little bit of legal advice on the side, and I'm, I'm working on that right now. Mm -hmm. Andrew, is there anything else before we wrap this up? 
No, I, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. I wish I could remember more. <laughs> and I just say I enjoyed the Air Force and mm -hmm. uh, it was a good life. And I, I often wonder what would happen if I'd stayed in. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, Andrew Lashensky, we thank you so much for coming and taking part in the Natick Veterans Oral History Project. Glad to be here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.